I picked up an AMG I Copart. It's a C32, a 2004 mile a year with 102,000 miles on it. Pretty light, pretty light hit. I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you right now, in fact. So here's a C32. It's got a major boo-boo up front, which that's not major at all. I just, just took out the front bumper, which does run into a few bucks. Uh, looks like a little damage there. I gotta get on the lift and, and look it over better. I've got a fender already. Ooh, that's the neat part though, AMG. It's got the AMG tips, it's got the AMG C32 emblem on it. It's got the AMG wheels. Looks like it's really not banged up. The interior is pretty nice too. It sometimes is generally see that the, uh, well, this is, this is like standard option as the cup holder's gone, screwed up. And that probably happened in the accident where this guy got jostled around in the car to cover for the center console came off because the rest of the car is really nice. And it's got 102,000 miles on it. Um, yeah, it's, it's not in bad shape interior wise. All right, got her up on the left. I got the front bumper off. <coughs> Pardon me. And I got that fender just about ready to come off. This is a real pain in the neck, though. Two bolts back here. Actually, they're nuts on studs. And I got them off. And I want to be able to flex this out of the way and pop that fender off. But, man, it's tight. So <coughs> I got to work on that a little more. Ah. So, yeah, we're, we're, getting, we're getting there. We got that off. We got the front bumper off. All right, guys, what I had here is uh, I already broke down. I have so many heat guns. I had like two or three of them. I can't put my hands on a single one of them because my shop is a disaster area. But anyway, enough whining. Uh, so I bought this heat gun yesterday. It's a uh, Wagner. Pretty pretty nice. I like it. And it's it's all digital. The controls are digital on it. It uh, You know, you turn it on, and it really can't hurt itself. It, it, it has a cool down period. So anyway, that worked pretty good. And what I did with it was this was all bent. This whole piece here, get that out of the way. This whole piece here was like, like bent. It was bowed way up into here. And this was all bent, bent way down. So I hit it with the heat gun and got it kind of warm and uh, really didn't have to get super hot or nothing and kind of just bend it right back into shape. And I squeezed this down and, and it went right back into state shape. And I'm thinking, once it once it cools down it's gonna you know go back but it's it stayed uh evidently this plastic uh has a memory so you heat it up and it, and it kind of goes back pretty good and easy so other than that this this is pretty beat up i mean it's it's pretty scabby underneath from you know driving people bumping the curbs and bumpers and stuff like that and they they, they scrape these up pretty bad i think i'll be able to make it look pretty decent i i can you know i'll say i grind all that off but my next thing to do to it is fix this chunk. It's got an actual chunk tore out of it. Now, it was it was kind of a chunk and it was flapping and I cut it off the rest of the way. So I made a squared, squared out, just hogged it out, just squared it out and made it so I can make a patch for it, which I did here. And so I've got this patch and I've kind of shaped it. And once again, I use that heat gun to shape it. And I got it so it'll pretty much just fit in there. So as I go, I'll take some uh, some video of it, but I'm just going to tape it on this outside, and then I'm going to use this epoxy Devcon Home Plastic Welder, and I'm going to mix it up a whole bunch of it, and kind of almost like a fiberglassing process, I'm going to use this mat to reinforce it, and then just put a nice layer of that epoxy right over the whole thing. To tighten it all in and make it uh, make it a repair. So that's what I'm gonna work on now. And as always, anytime you want something to stick, an adhesive or a bondo or a putty or or paint or anything, uh, the surface see it's all dirty. Obviously, that's gotta get cleaned up. Uh, and then after I clean it up, I'm gonna hit it with this old air grinder rough it up good, hit it with that grit, and uh, 
You know, I already did it on this piece. You can probably see it. It's it's got it's got some squirrels in it. It's, it's I ran a grinder across it. So what'll happen is all those little scratches will it'll help that uh, that um, epoxy bind up and and just grip right into it and and form a good adhesive bond. I gotta do a little cleanup grinding here. <laughs> Doesn't take long. Oh, they got about to change that pad. It's kind of beat up. Okay. So I've got my piece fitted. I've got it ground off. I used some compressed air and blew it off. You can see how that's roughed up. Um, and if the piece fits pretty decent. I mean, it isn't perfect. That's going to wind up a little piece there that's going to get filled. But from the back side, I'm going to use this mesh. It's actually a mesh meant for uh, roofing. Believe it or not, it's a reinforcing mesh that you use for uh, patching holes in roofing. And you can then you just smear like a, a roof compound tar kind of stuff over it. And, and it just blends strength to a patch so it doesn't just fall through as a hole. So it basically it's almost like a spackling the back side of this this bumper piece. And then on the front side, I've got it taped to hold it in place for now. I use some duct tape, which will probably be a pain to get off, but I'm sure we'll manage. And um, yeah, then um, so my next step is to mix up some of this uh, epoxy and uh, probably the whole tube. And then I'll plaster it all over there, just smear it in there. We'll see how that goes. Okay, <clears throat> so I got this, uh, I, I used up the whole rest of that double tube of uh, epoxy. And it looks like it was just enough to get a pretty decent uh, layer on there in that mesh. And I went beyond, so this, this goes way over into here. You can, you can kind of see it. So it's an inch past, at least inch and a half. And I did the same on this side. So, so this mesh will be stuck pretty good to that plastic. Original bumper is stuck to that. Hopefully everything's stuck together. I'll probably mix up another thing of that and then put another heavier coat on. But I'm going to let this set up first before I do that. I think that'll add strength. And I'll also try to I'll, I'll spread it out further. And once I'm done, I'll trim it up. The other part I'm working on is this part right here. This is a, a piece of trim that goes around the bumper. Um, but actually, oh, this is the broken buffer, but it's that piece. You can tell where it's missing. So I'm heating this up. I'm going to see if I can press this dent out. And then that way I just have to get the, the chrome trim strip that snaps into it. But I'm going to try to press that out. And it's, I wouldn't worry about it so much, but it's deviated. It's got a big deviation in it. So I'll try to press that out. I might have to do a little bit of filler. We got that special filler for these rubber bumpers. We'll do that. Well, plastic bumper, right? Whatever this stuff is. So I'm going to let it heat up and uh, try pressing that out. Okay, so that pressed right out. I got the little dent right out. Got rid of it. I'll see if I can get it in the right light here. Ah, yeah, pretty much got rid of the deviation. The one along that top edge. I'll have to grind it off, sand it off a little bit, and fill it. But I'll make it look good again. Okay, I just put another layer on there. Uh, I mixed up a whole tube this time. I have one. I bought two kits, and uh, I mixed up the second tube. So that's looking pretty good. I got that mesh pressed in there nice. It's uh, it's right in there. I got kind of a thick layer of that. I'm covering up this crack. There's this crack right here that comes up through, and I think I've got this new piece stuck in there pretty good. I've, I've even got the contour fairly decent. So what I'm going to do is let this cure overnight and I'll come back to it tomorrow.